Yep, we'll do it this way. <laughs> It is seven o'clock. Not bad. Okay. So tonight we're going to do our beginning class and I'm going to show you how to work wet on wet. I'm going to show you how to float a bit. I'm going to show you how to stencil. We're going to talk about working from the back of a design out and um, we're going to go from there. A couple of things. I will try to read your comments as we're going. If I can't read your comments, I will answer them all. I'll answer them all at the end anyway, so don't worry about that. But if I can read them while I'm painting, I will. I'll go through technique tonight because it's the beginner class. And I guess that's it. If you have any more questions, just let me know while we're going. And I'm going to flip you around and we're going to start working. Okay? Okay, let's see if I can do this. Okay. Ah, here we go. We're upside down, aren't we? Hmm. I'm going to start my piece backwards. Okay, so... Someday I'll get this right. I'm actually, if anybody knows anything about a document camera, let me know. I'm upside down now, aren't I? <laughs> okay. I will figure it out. I am watching it. I am just a little bit behind. I'm a 30 minute delay. So I'll flip my camera as, as need be. Okay, so don't worry about it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stencil. I am totally upside down. Okay, let's try this. I'm gonna swing you around a minute until I get the camera right. Oh, that's better. I might swing you just a little bit more. All right, so I am gonna start my background. I'm using a smaller stencil. I happen to love this stencil. I did put it on my supply list for anybody that wants it to know. Now when I work, I always work from the back forward. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my stenciling in my background. If you painted your flower, we did that so that we'd have one coat down. If you didn't, it's okay. But either way, we'll cover it, so don't worry about it. Now, working with, I'm working with Extreme Sheens. They are DecoArts metallic paint, and it has fabulous coverage. So I use it pretty often. Okay. I only have a little bit out. Just little bits. Okay. I'm going to take my stencil brush, and I use Dynasty Stencil Pros. They are fabulous. I'm going to pick up some paint. I'm going to kind of rub it in. Pull some off. So you just have little bits. You don't want a lot. So I'm going to just lay my stencil. You can tape it down. A lot of people tape it with tape. I just hold it. Now when you stencil, I go clockwise and counterclockwise. I kind of go both ways. I just move my hand. And you see, I'm in and out. Now what this does is this gets all your paint in and it doesn't look like you have blobs of paint. Okay? Now, to line it up, I went over the edge. Be careful you don't go over the edge. If you do, take it off. If you want, just go one row short. Okay? Now, when your stencil is not as wide as your surface, so all you're going to do is take your polka dots and line them up with the row before you. So you see how these perfectly line up? 
I'm just laying it right there. Okay, so when you come off or on, when you're stenciling, you can always line it right back up. And then I'll just continue. Clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. So in the initial application, if you only went to this row, so you wouldn't go near the edge, that's fine. You just line it right back up. Okay, clockwise, counterclockwise. My brush is perfectly straight up and down. Okay, I'm not on the side. I am perfectly straight up and down. These brushes have a totally flat bristles at the top. Okay, now, if you look, I have a little space right here where the stencil wasn't high enough. So again, I'm just gonna lay and it's only a tiny bit. I'm gonna lay my stencil, line it right back up. I'm just gonna come in and we do those two little spots, okay? To clean these stencils, it's a real easy clean. You can right away take a baby wipe and clean them. Or what I do is I bought an old cookie sheet, not an old cookie sheet, I bought a new cookie sheet from the dollar store I lay it, so pretend this is your cookie sheet, I lay it here so it'll kind of hold. I take a magic eraser and I just clean it with a magic eraser. It will work on old stencils, it'll work on new stencils, okay? Now, if you look, I've got stenciling on my flower. See that? But that's okay because we're, we haven't really painted the flower yet, so that's fine. Okay, let me just see if there's anything I have to answer. And hello, 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 everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you're all here with me. I'm so glad you're all painting with me. If you have any questions, ask me. If you're painting along with me, please send a picture. You can send a picture to me. I will be very happy if you post a picture on the library's website. They're always so happy to see what we paint. And, um, okay, and nothing. All right, so now I'm gonna use Wildberry. If you did not base coat your petals, I just came in with a filbert. Now a filbert is, it has a rounded top. So you see that top? The bristles are rounded, so it's easier to not have when you lay your brush, I'm gonna do it on here so you can see it. Forget my dates, my dates are there so that I can tell you at the end of the next project. When I lay my brush, I don't have the harsh edge of a flat brush. So if I was using a flat brush, let me just grab one. And I do this, you see the difference in the edge? So when I'm doing Sorry, my brush is in my mouth. When I'm doing petals, my petals have rounded edges. So I want to start with rounded edges. It's a much easier stroke than trying to round out with a square flat. This step is just so that we have a nice vibrant color. I start at the tip of my petal and I just pull. I'm not too concerned that it's perfect, and I've done this step. But I wanna show you how to do it. And if you haven't done it, just come in and do it. I'm just coming in. If you've done this already, and you've put your one coat on, you do not need to do this step. I'm just showing you, okay? So I would just take my brush, and here's my pet, the edge of my petal, and I'm just pulling in. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give it color underneath so that I get true color when the second coat goes on. Okay, so it's more opaque. And all I'm doing is pressure and pull. Pressure and pull. This is the chisel edge of the brush. Here's your bristles, here's your ferrule, here's your handle. 
when you apply pressure, you push lightly on your bristles, not as far as your ferrule. You don't want to, let me grab you an old, old brush. You don't want to do this. Can you see that? Because then what happens is you break the bristles at the ferrule of the brush. So you don't want to do that lightly. Okay? So now you should all be where I am. What color wildberry? Sorry. One quick coat of wildberry. If you did vintage pink, some of you asked me before and I told you vintage pink, it's perfectly fine because we're going to work wet on wet. I'm just looking for an undercoat, which means putting a color underneath so that we have a nice solid coloring in the end. So don't worry if it's vintage pink or it's wildberry. Okay. Uh, I think we're okay. Okay. All right, so now on your palette. And if I'm going too fast, just tell me and I'll slow down. We're going to put out Wildberry. We're going to put out okay, a second, Antique, Mo Antique Maroon and Vintage Pink. And... Let me just give you a tiny bit of color theory. We're going to work in values. So values are the up and down of the color. So we're going to go from light to dark, and that constitutes your values. Very, very basic color theory. When I base coat, now you can see I have a medium, I have a dark, and I have a light. So I'm going to base coat in my medium, I'm going to shade in my dark, and I'm going to highlight in my pink. As I work wet on wet, when I blend these colors, we'll create a couple of other values in there. But I start medium, I add dark, I add light. And they're all in the pink family. So you could have values of pink, you can have values of blue. You but it's always medium, dark, light. There could be a highlight, there could be a low dark. Okay. Now, flowers are one of my very favorite things. When I paint flowers, and this is with anything, and it's for me, it's personal. Do you have to paint this way? No. Does everybody paint this way? No. I find it easier so that I don't have to spend a lot of time touching up. So I start with my back petals. And when, when I say my back petals, hi Shirley, I mean the petals that are behind another petal. Now the way you tell that is a top petal would be a whole petal. So you see the whole edge. This petal you're only seeing half. So it's underneath this petal. If this were above, this would come like this. And then this would be under and this would be a half. So that's how you tell if something's on top. If it's a whole edge, it's on top. Okay? Now I start with the back petals because it makes it much easier. This, I would paint here. And then when I paint here, I don't have to worry if I get this on here. This will cover it. Okay, so I'm going to start with my back petals, my back petals, my back petals, back, 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 back. Okay, and that's what makes my flower dimensional because I have front petals and I have back petals. If I only had petals of one, see, okay, so here, you can't tell right now which is top and which is bottom. So right now, we have a very, very flat flower, and that's simply because... We haven't created front and back petals. We haven't created any dimension. Okay. I feel like I'm very long-winded tonight. All right. So I'm going to pick up. I'm still using the same brush. I'm using my Filbert. 
and I'm using a 10 filbert. I'm going to, and you got to work faster than not because it's got to be wet. So I'm basing the whole petal wildberry. I'm, here, I'm going to put this here so you can see. I'm just going to wipe some out. I'm going to pick up the antique maroon on the same brush from the base, which is where the center is. I'm just going to pull some dark and blend it. I'm going to wipe. I'm going to pick up some vintage pink. And from the tip, I'm going to pull and I'm going to blend. You see that? Now, there's a couple things I want to tell you. See how I'm blending? I don't have a line because I've pulled color. This piece is going to look redder than this piece. Right now, that's what we want. So when you get this and it doesn't look this coloring, you are not wrong. You are absolutely on the right track. Okay? So we've now have the dark. And if you see, I went a little bit on this petal, but I'm not worried about it. Okay? Now I'll move to my next petal that's in the back, which is this one. And I'm going to repeat. I'm going to base coat in Wildberry. I appreciate you all being here. Thank you. I'm very lucky I get to do what I love. And you all get to join me. Okay, so I'm coming in and I'm pulling dark, wiping, and I'm leaving this here. So you can see, usually it's like on my lap, on my knee, and I just pull from there. I'm on the tip with the vintage pink, and I'm very lightly swiping and pulling it together. So I can see my medium, I can see my dark, and I can see my light. We'll come in and we'll float and we'll shade some, so we'll be able to do that too. Okay. Now, my next is this one and it's not a pattern it's not top bottom top bottom top bottom because then it would look like a pinwheel but this one is under this one and under this one so I'm going to base it wild berry if your paint is drying too quick if you have full glazing medium just dress your brush in it if you don't add just a little bit more water and you see how I'm just pulling my dark that way I'm wiping I'm picking up vintage pink and what we're doing it's called painting wet on wet so in simple terms that's exactly what we're doing we have a wet base coat we're pulling in while it's wet we're pulling in the dark when it while it's wet, we're pulling in the light and we're blending. So we're literally working wet on wet. Okay, and you see how I'm bumping around? Hi, Carolyn. I'm glad you found us. Sometimes I have a problem. All right, now these are not on top of each other, so it doesn't matter. I'll just come here and I'll do this one. Now, again, because I work from the back out, it does not matter if I get it in the center or I get it on the petal that's on top. These petals here don't have light on them. Their light would be all the way back here. Okay? Now, when you're painting, I want you to do the same thing I am. I know there's times I'm upside down. Because when you paint, you want your hand to be comfortable. You don't want to be struggling to turn your hand. You want to turn your piece. So I'm turning my piece. So I know it's upside down to you, but if I do it the other way, it would be uncomfortable for you, but my hand would be in the way. So 
if I left it right side up the whole time, my hand would be in the way. And I'm pulling and I'm blending. And you see how I'm creating these petals? Now I wash my brush. You can hear when I'm washing my brush. The reason that I'm washing my brush when I do, there's no set time, but if it seems to have globs of paint on it, then I wash my brush so that I'm not going into the next petal with and creating new colors. So now this petal is under this petal, but above this petal. And you can tell that because this is not a full edge. It would be this way. And this is a full edge, but I went over it by accident. Okay, so I'm going to come in and I'll get rid of that right now. Look, I just, I have a block in my paint. I just go right over that. And I base it Wildberry. And they're all the same color in this piece. So I'm repeating myself just so that you get, you know, it's not any different. I'm not saying it's different for any reason. And I'm here and I'm swiping dark, I'm wiping, I'm turning, and I'm picking up vintage pink, and I'm swiping vintage pink. And as I swipe, you see how it's blending? I'm not creating a line, okay? Now we'll come in and we'll float some, and I will tell you, if you master the wet on wet, could usually get away with no floating. Wouldn't you all love that? You know, it makes you so happy to not have to do that. Not me, because I love to float. All right, so now I'm here. This petal is on top of this petal. So I'm gonna come here, and I'm basing Wildberry, wiping, picking up a little bit of antique maroon coming from the base of the petal. The base of the petal is where it tucks into the center. The tip of the petal is the outside edge of the petal. On the tip of the petal, I'm gonna pick up vintage pink and swipe. Now we will come in and we'll highlight here and that'll make a huge difference in pulling this off of this. So this is the beginning of our dimension. And you see how I'm bopping around, which I tend to do. It's like beating to your old drum. But I paint a lot of flowers. I design a lot of flowers. And in my flowers, I always, and it's a golden rule for me, not for everybody, but for me, that I work from the back petals out. When I do things, when I type instructions and such, it will have physical numbers. So this will say one, this will say two, this will say three, and you'll follow along and you'll paint in that order because that's, that's why you, how you can create your dimension. I'm not speaking very well tonight, am I? Wipe. And I'm here and I'm pulling. Now, one minute, let me get this in before it dries because remember, you gotta stay wet on wet. And if you're having a hard time, add a little bit more water in your brush and that'll make it flow just a, just a little bit because if you put too much, you're just gonna get transparent paint. Now, you see how I went over the edge here? with my brush, I'm just coming in with a Q-tip, a wet Q-tip, damp Q-tip, and I'm just rubbing it off, okay? And it comes right off. Q-tips from the dollar store. Q-tips from the dollar store because they have less cotton on them. So the less cotton on them, the better they are for um, cleaning, excuse me, cleaning up. 
If you have a lot of cotton on your piece, what happens is you drag the paint all over the place. And then it's not so pretty. Now, before we started, and I honestly, I didn't think about it. Aw, thank you, David. If anybody didn't transfer their pattern on before and needs me to show you how, um, just tell me, remind me towards the end, and I will gladly show you how to transfer a pattern on. Okay, so I'm pulling. I'm swiping. So you can see I've already blended my dark value into my medium value. So by the time I bring in my light value, now I'm blending it into the three. Now I have blends. Now you can start to see some of this dimension. You can see this is under this. You can see this is under this. You can see this is under... We will pull it up more when we float, but this is starting our dimension. So we went from flat to dimension. Now, if you don't have the colors I used, or you don't like the colors I used, you can do this with anything. You can do yellows, you can do blues, you can do reds, you can do whites. If you do whites, use gray for dark. And start medium, base medium. In your dark areas, swipe in your dark. On your light areas, swipe in a light. So whatever colors you use, use dark, medium, and light. It does not have to be pinks. Could be yellows, could be blues, could be oranges. Oranges would be pretty. I haven't done an orange flower in a while. I think I'll do one in orange. Reds seem to be what everybody likes because they're so vibrant. Okay. Now, if you came in late and you still want to paint this, on the library website, and for, I don't, I don't know how long, so don't quote me, for a couple of days anyway, when you go into the library Facebook page, if you go under the live tab, the video will be there. After a little bit, they move it under, there's a tab, I think that it says videos. So then they move it to the video tab. And I've done them since the pandemic started, and they're all still there. So I suspect but they're going to stay, if not for always, for quite a while. Um, so if you don't find it, what you're looking for in the live tab, it will be in the video tab. And then just scroll down to Painting with Linda, and there's a bunch of them. We have some really fun projects. So you see how I'm pulling this together? I have two more petals, I have three more petals left, I have one. I have two, I have three. Shirley, I have the line drawing on my Facebook page. And I only keep it up until the night of class, so I'll leave it up tonight and tomorrow it comes down. So pop on over to my Facebook page and it's, I put up um, a flyer and then after the flyer, um, the first comment is I put the line drawing. So two weeks before classes, we have two classes a month, and two weeks before, I will put the flyer up on my Facebook page. You're welcome. I'll put the flyer up on my Facebook page, and I will put the line drawing in the comments. I do that, and then I leave it up. So the next class is, oh, it's right here, 7, to, uh, seven 9, 23. Um, I put it up already in case, because we're going to work in fluid acrylics, so if anybody wanted to order them. And, well, I won't talk about that now because we're talking about this. And you see how I'm just blending in my colors? Isn't that looking pretty? I could paint flowers all day long, in case you all didn't know that. And I'm here. I 
And for this piece, I'm just using a filbert. I'm using a Dynasty Black Silver fil filbert. And I will tell you, and I always say don't quote me because I don't remember, the Black Silver line, they work so well. I use them for a lot of things. And it's a single price line. So I, I think they're 349 or 359 no matter what size, no matter what type. So if you do a filbert, you do a flat. So they're really, really good value. Okay. But you can use anything you want. Any brush you have. The only thing I will tell you is to do these techniques. Let me clean this. You want a synthetic bristle. So a bristle that looks a synthetic bristle. You don't want like the value packs they sell at the store with the white bristles and you don't I don't even have the other one. The other one is um, it looks like horse hair and what happens is as soon as you get it wet it gets limp and when it gets limp you can't do these techniques. So whatever brush you choose to use just make sure it's got synthetic hair and it's got a bounce to it. So you see how I'm kind of bouncing? Because you need that to hold the paint. Okay. Look, you're getting brush lessons. And, hmm. I think it's more because I like to hear myself talk. Not really. All right, so do you see how I've now created partial dimension? Now, this is real important. Look at the coloring on this and look at the coloring on this. I think you can see them both. Okay, this will be this, but when you're painting and you do things, you're coloring, because we still have another step to do, I don't want you to be working along with me and say, oh, mine doesn't look like the picture, because I want you to look like my demo piece. It's a big difference in color, okay? Okay. You all got that? Okay. So, if anybody has any questions, just chatter away. Now I'm going to float. Now, I want you to think about, and I know you're just looking at my piece, but I want you to think about why we're going to do what we're doing. We're creating dimension. If you remember why we're using the colors we're using, it will help you no matter what you're painting to know what goes where and why you're doing it. So always know that dark makes the item recede and light brings the item forward. Sorry about that. So here where I have the dark, it's pushing this petal down and the light that's here is pulling this edge up okay so no matter what you're painting no matter where you're Carolyn I'll answer you in a little bit no matter where you're painting no matter what you're painting be it a flower be it a flag be it a landscape be it a seascape no matter what you're painting that rule is that rule dark makes the item recede light brings the item towards us, okay? So when we're pushing something down, we're dark. So I'm gonna start with my dark and I'm gonna start with my separations. So I can see my petal separations because I have brought the dark in here. I am going to float, and I'm gonna go through floating with you, so don't, don't panic. Not that anybody panics. If I want, and if you remember that there's a lot of things you need to remember, so watch this video 10 times. And write, take notes. I always say take notes. If I want to push this petal down and pull this petal up, my dark will go on the petal I'm pushing down, and it will go against the petal I'm pulling up. Okay? Normally, this would be where I'd say, does that make sense? But nobody can answer me, so we'll just hope. 
Okay, so floating, four steps. Four steps. I always tell my students, write it down. When you're floating, say it so you don't miss a step. Wet. Wet your brush. Now, I'm using, um, I put on the list a 12 flat. Never use less than a 12 shader to float with. Okay? So, wet. You'll see a shine. I don't know if you can see it. There's a shine on your bristles. You're going to take your brush, you're going to lay it flat on your paper towel until the shine goes dissipates from the chisel edge to the ferrule. That will leave you the right amount of water in your brush. Okay? And I tell you that because if I say go one, two, and lift, that's what my brush does. You may be using a different brush and it may take you one second, you know, one count, it may take you four. So if you follow watching the shine, that'll give you the perfect amount of water in your brush. Okay? So, wet, blot, take your paints. Now, we're working dark because remember, we're going to shade separations. You're going to load the corner of your brush. I just want a little bit on the corner. You know what? I'm going to do this with light for a second just so you can see it. I just want a little bit on the corner of my brush. You see how little I have? Okay. And then I'm going to blend short strokes. Something that people have a hard time with is they do this. Okay. And you pull all your water out of your brush and you lose all your paint. So your four, your four steps, wet, blot, load, blend. Okay. So I wet, watch my shine, blot flat. Hold your brush as perpendicular as you can because you only want a little bit. Remember, it's going to get wider when you blend. And then you're going to blend short strokes until you have a graduation of color. If you noticed, I walked away from my paint because if I did this and walked this way, now look, my whole brush is full of paint and I don't want that. I only want on the corner. So wet, blot, corner load, blend, small strokes, walking away until I have a graduation of color. Now I have a graduation of color. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in where I'm pushing down. Remember, the reason that we're shading is we want to push this back pedal down. I'm on the back pedal, right up against, ooh, not like that, oh, that's better, right up against the pedal that I'm pulling up. You see how I just popped that? Okay, so when I told you to float, wet, blot, load, blend, okay? When you're floating, keep all... Now, look at how flat my brush is. I'm not lifting it like this. I'm totally this way. So when your brush is down, all the bristles on all the surface all the time. I am so full of sayings. Hey, Fran. Okay, so all the bristles on all the surface all the time and if you notice I went the whole stroke let me just find this one I'm not doing this so as much as I'm going to give you what you should do I'm going to give you what you shouldn't do too I'm not doing this because if you see you can see every area every spot that I lifted the brush. You want a stroke. Now, if you don't have enough paint to go the whole stroke, go as far as you can, reload, and start at the top again. Okay? Now, I floated here. Can you see that shine? I'm hoping. That shine means your paint is wet. 
and I still have it here. If I came in and I floated here, I'm going to pull this right off. So I have to wait until this is dry, which is the reason I'm hopping around, okay? So wet, blot, corner load, blend. I'll go here. I'm separating here. I'm going to pull this on top, so I'm separating here. Now, if you notice, I'm on the bottom petal. I'm in the shape of the top petal. Okay. Usually, by the time you get all the way around, reload every time. Wet, blot, load, blend. You will hear my voice in your sleep tonight. And I promise that because a lot of people tell me that. All the bristles on all the surface all the time. If you have a problem floating, okay, I am going to do some sort of video and I'll see if the library can put it on their Facebook page. I'm not going to do it um, for a couple, of, probably two weeks. Um, so that it'll help you. Okay, so now... I floated here to push this down and pull this up, but this is under this one too. So now I'm on the opposite side of this petal. Now you see how I just pushed that petal all the way into the back behind these two petals. Can you see that? So wet, blot, load, blend. When you look at your piece, as you go around, every you have to have a separation on every petal. If they touch, this one's easy because it's just a little bit. But like these are not touching, so it doesn't matter. That's okay. But anything that touches, so this is separated from this, this is separated from this, this is separated from this, but this is not separated from this. So if you look, you have to say, which way am I separating? So I'm floating. Wet, blot, load, blend. And I'm going to come here. Now, if you go too far or somewhere you don't want, here's my paint. Take the clean end of the brush and just come in and pull it off. If you do it right away while it's wet, it works. It's just the cheating way. Well, you guys are doing so good. Nobody's asking me questions. Okay, wet, blot, corner load, blend. I've separated these. Now I have to separate here. So I'll come in and I'll separate here. This one I separated. This is separated. This is separated. This one needs to be separated. And you see how I'm, and all I'm doing is using my dark to make the back petals separate, uh, to separate from the back, from the front petals. Now, if you look at this piece, you can see, now you can see the depth, of course, right? But you can see this is behind this, and this is behind this, okay? That makes all the difference in what you're doing, okay? So another thing I want to do is I'm going to have a center here. My petals are going into my center. So I'm going to shade with my paint towards the center because remember, dark makes the item recede and we're putting the dark towards where we're pushing down. We're pushing these petals into the center. And if you look at a flower in real life, now I know I'm not at the edge here, but my center is there. So when I painted, I went into where my center is. If you're not confident, and this is a good place to show you, let me just let me just finish this and then I'll show you. 
if you're not confident on where your center is going to lie, go in and trace your pattern back on. And I'm going to show you how to do that, which would be the same way you would trace your pattern on in the beginning. Okay. So, you take your line drawing. I transferred my line drawing onto tracing paper. I have graphite. Now, graphite looks like carbon paper and it works like carbon paper. It is not carbon paper. It is erasable and when you put your hands on it, you won't get it all over. Carbon paper you're going to have a big mess with. So, depending on the company that makes it, it could be called graphite. It could be called transfer paper. Okay? Same thing, just different companies call it different names. Okay? So, when you start your piece, you'll have your piece and you'll lay your pattern, you'll lay your line drawing. Now I lay it, graphite paper, here's the shiny side, the dull side. It's the shiny side that's down. I just hold one edge, I lift, I'll put it underneath. Again, you feel comfortable taping it, tape it. I use a stylus. Graphite paper works with pressure. So you, excuse me, you can use the back of a brush. You can use a toothpick. You can use a pencil. You can use anything you want. And you see how I'm just tracing? And then when you trace the whole thing, you lift and your pattern will be there. Okay? So it would work the same way after you paint your flower. You take your tracing and lay it where your petals are, slip this under, lift a little, and I just keep my hand here, slip and just come in and trace your center. Then your tracing will be there and then you'll know where to shade. Okay? Now, one thing I will tell you, because I watch a lot of people do it, they take their graphite and they go like this, and then they go like this, and they have no idea where they are. So that's something you got to just be conscious of. Surface, line drawing, and then just lift your line drawing and slide your graphite in between. Okay? That will give you where you can see what you're doing. Okay? So now... I've shaded what is the base of the petals because I'm pushing it under the center. So my center is on top of my petals. Okay? Now, okay, deep breath. Remember I said dark makes the item recede and light brings the item towards us. So what we want to do is where we push down the bottom, we want to pull up the top edges. So, and I'll bring this closer to show you again. Wet is a shine, blot. Now we're going to corner load in the vintage pink. Corner load, a little bit blend. Now you can see I have two colors on my brush. So that just means I didn't clean my brush. Make sure you have a clean brush and clean water. Okay, wet, blot, corner load, blend. There we go. Small strokes. Okay. All the bristles on all the surface all the time. Now I'm on the top edge of the petal. Right now it's going to look very light. We're going to tone that. It's almost as if we were working in grisaille. So we're going to put our lights and our darks in, and then we're going to go from there. Now, remember, we know which ones are on top because we've already pushed down the other ones. 
so here's the dark. We're not going to put our light on top of our dark because our dark pushed it down. Our light pulled it up. Okay? So I'm here. I'll come in. And again, the same way that I skipped around because it was wet in the dark, I'm going to do the same thing in the light. Okay? Okay? And I can see if it's wet because of the shine. So this is on top of this. This petal is on top of this petal. Again, I got a little bit of paint off the petal. So my wet Dollar Tree um, Q-tip is what I want to use. And again, it's okay if I'm going into the center because I haven't put the center in yet. So I'm painting from the back out. I'm just going to float here. Wet, blot, load, blend. All the bristles on all the surface all the time. If you say these things to yourself while you're floating, you will not miss a step. What I find when I'm teaching is the steps that are missed, which is usually blending, the steps that are missed is because you're not saying the steps. Say the steps or write the steps on a piece of paper and follow them until they just become second nature. And it'll take a little bit of time. Floating is the more you practice, the better you're going to get. Practice um, if you're not doing a class, which is perfectly fine. Get a coloring book. Practice on a coloring book. Practice on a piece of deli paper. And you see how I'm just floating on the top edges. And look at how I just totally, now watch this. Here's two petals that I haven't brought the light into yet. Okay. And watch what I'm going to do. Dark push the item down, light pulls it up. So I'm going to go here to pull this side up. And again, it looks much lighter than it will. I'm going to pull this edge up. And you see how I just created a ton of dimension in here? And then I just follow it around. And I follow it around to check. Is this one up and this down and this up and did I miss anything? Same way I did the dark when we got over here and I said I missed two of them. These petals I don't put anything on. Okay. But you see how I just created whoop, now we'll turn it right side up for you. I created perfect dimension. Well, as perfect as perfect can be. Nothing of course is perfect, but see that? Beautiful, right? I agree. You guys did good. Okay. So, before we get too far, let me just go over a couple of things. We base coated warm white. I took the polka dot stencil, the dot stencil, and with Extreme Sheen Bronze, I stenciled. I laid my stencil and I stenciled. Counterclockwise and clockwise. Pattern was transferred. I worked wet on wet. Base the whole petal in my medium value. Thank you, Shirley. I brought the dark from the base because we're pushing it down. And then I pulled the light, which was vintage pink, from the tip. And I blended. I used a filbert for that. Then I came in and I wanted to create my dimension. I shaded. When you shade, you're using a darker value. When you highlight, you're using a lighter value. So if somebody says shade, it's darker. If somebody says highlight, it's lighter. I shaded my separations. I highlighted my top edges. Okay? So now we're going to create our center. As soon as we create our center, we're going to pop that flower. Because then it's going to all make sense. So I used a deer foot. Okay, and a deer foot looks like a deer's hoof. There's a toe, which is the long edge, and there's a heel, which is the short edge. 
okay? So put out a little asphaltum, a little cadmium yellow, and a little crimson tide. Now I know a couple of you messaged me before that you didn't have crimson tide, so you can use country red or deep burgundy, either one. And autumn red, you can use um, country red for. Crimson Tide, here's Crimson Tide. It's kind of a cross between the two. It's darker than country red, but it's lighter than deep burgundy. So you may want to just pick up a little bit of both. This is kind of a come play with me. So you won't always have. Okay, so put out, I'll put this here, put out a little bit of asphaltum. If you don't have asphaltum, use uh, burnt umber. Asphaltum has just a tinge more red, which I tend to go towards the warmer colors. A little bit of cad yellow, and then crimson tide or deep burgundy. Okay, so I have my three colors. Now, again, my center on my original is yellow. Well, the bulk of it is yellow. If I don't have the brown underneath it, then I don't have any depth to the center. Okay? So remember, because dark makes the atom recede and light brings it towards us, you have to have the dark beneath it or else it's just going to be flat yellow. And I know I repeat myself a lot, and I repeat myself a lot because I want you to understand why we do what we do, because if you understand why we do what we do, we'll be okay. Um, yellow, red, and Tide. All right, Emily, as Fulton, so you need the brown, because we're going to do the brown first, then you're going to need yellow, and then you need whatever red you're going to use. And I'm going to put out a little bit of autumn red, too, because I think I'm going to do that, too. And just pop that up. But, so put out the four colors, because you're going to need the autumn red. Or country, same thing. Uh, oh, here it is. So it's kind of on the country red side. And mine's old. It's kind of watery. All right, so on the toe, remember, this is a deer foot. This is the toe. This is the heel. On the toe, I'm putting the brown on the toe, and I'm, my brush is straight up and a little bit, little bit of a bend. I'm not back in my hand, I'm just a little bit, and I'm tapping in my center. Now if you notice, I'm going a little bit over onto the petals. Because my center is on top of my petals, I want to push my petals down. I do not want a line between the two to make it look like they're connecting, okay? So I want my flat, my center over my flower. So can you see that? You just gotta wait a second. I'm on a delay, so I wanna make sure you can see what I did. Okay, good. So you see how it's a little bit over the edges? I know I held it there for a long time. I'm gonna pick it up. All right, so when I work with a deer foot, your deer foot must be dry, okay? If you have a wet deer foot, what happens is you have soggy bristles and then they the paint just goes bleh. That's a Linda word. I'm just gonna put in a little bit more brown so that it's wet. This again is for our depth. Wipe, just wipe. On the toe, pick up cad yellow, so you can see it's just on the toe of my brush. Very lightly, very, very, very light pressure. So here's gonna be my pressure. See how I'm just touching? So I'm just touching, and I'm going to add some yellow to my center. Wipe, pick up a little more yellow. And the reason I wiped is because the brown is wet. So what happens is it'll make too, it'll put too much brown on my brush, and then I'll have yucky color. 
I use real technical words sometimes. Okay, so I'm here. I'm just till you're happy, but I don't want you to make the whole thing yellow. I want there to be some dimension there. Okay, do you see that? Wipe. I'm just wiping, I'm not wetting. I'm not wetting till I'm done. I'm gonna pick up some Crimson Tide right on the toe and just along the edges. Let me see if I can keep my hand out of the way for you. I'm just gonna tap some Crimson Tide. See that? And it's just along the edge. So in my original, here it is. Just along the edge. Pick up a little bit of the autumn red or country red and brighten it a little. Well, I don't like that. Let me get some country red. My autumn red is just very soggy, so I'm just going to pull some country red. And I'm going to pick it up on the toe. And I'm just, now I'm not doing the whole red area. I just want to brighten some of it. And see how I just pulled this whole flower together? And again, this coloring will be this coloring. Do not fret. Now, I can see, because I have the brown, and then I have the yellow, and then I have the red, that I have dimension, okay? So now you can see it's not a flat center. <laughs> Thanks for coming, David. Okay, so you see how that now I have dimension? And that's just working with color. That, that's what that is. Okay. So once you like your center, make sure you like your center. Once you like your center, then you can rinse out your deer foot. And then just dry it. Now here's a brush tip because people have a hard time washing brushes. I personally use Murphy's Oil Soap. Put the Murphy's Oil Soap in the palm of your hand. Take your brush and wiggle. You will see the paint bubbling up on your bristles. Wiggle, rinse. If there's, if there's still paint there, do it again. Sometimes I have to do it a couple times. Okay? You're not this. Never this. This. Little wiggles. See how little my I'm wiggling? Rinse, pull all your water out and dry flat. Once they're totally dry and I leave them to dry overnight, then you can store them. You can store them this way. Up. But until they're dry, you do not want the water going down into the ferrule. It will s separate your bristle bristles and you'll have splayed bristles. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to take our coloring here and make it here, which of course we love to do. So we're gonna take a brush, any brush. Don't use your floating brush. Use your floating brush for just floating. Okay, now you'll see why I switched because my autumn red is just very runny. And I don't have any more, so I have to order some. All right, so wet, we're gonna go from the water Here's my country red. And I'm gonna make it like ink. See how light I am? This is what's called a wash. So I'm here. And then I'm gonna blot. I quickly blot. I'm not gonna do this because then I'm gonna have solid paint. So I wet, I'm inky, 
I blot and lift so that I don't have too much water. That's something that people usually struggle with when they wash. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna go right over the petals. And you see how now I'm taking the pink out and I'm making them red. And if it's not the color you like, make them the color you want. Well, in the red family. Don't go and make up a color. I'm still, because I'm washing and I'm not using the paint full strength, I'm not taking away all the shading and the highlighting we did. Now look at the difference between this and this. I've just taken my flower and made it red as opposed to dull pink. But if I did it in reds to start, I wouldn't have the same coloring that I have this way. Okay, and it's just a wash. And that's what they call a wash, thinning the paint and just brushing it over your surface. Okay. And again, if you're changing the color and you did yellow or um, blue, just take another value, a brighter value, and just wash over it. I don't always wash my petals, but in this lesson, I wanted to show you a couple of things. I wanted to show you how to wash, and I wanted to show you how to work wet on wet. So there's a lot of learning value here. Okay, so you see, now my flower's not pink. Now, look, my flower's the same. So it's important when we're painting together to know that I don't, and when I'm in person and I'm with you all and I can say, let me get you there, I can't always say that when we're on video. So just know, I will get you there, okay? We don't always get there as fast as you want, but we will. So now my flower looks just the same. Now I'll look at this and I'll say, oh, that's not bright enough, okay? And that's just because I didn't get bright enough on the edge of my center. So I'm gonna take my deer foot and I'm gonna take the red again and I'm just gonna come in and you may not have this and I'm gonna just tap up a little and just brighten just a little. I added just a little bit of warm white to that, which I'm not sure I like, but it is what it is. Okay? Let's try. Now sometimes, and this I'm telling you because you should do this, sometimes you'll look at something and you'll say, oh, I don't like that color. It's okay to play with your colors. Then I'm going back and putting the red over it. And now see, I'm putting the country red over it. And see how much brighter it looks? So it gives us a brightness. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to stencil. Now, I'm going to take my hobo stencil, maybe. Now I know some people have ordered it. And FYI, anybody who's new and just here for the first time before class, if you have any questions, just private message me. I am more than happy to help you. This stencil, I love. I love the word. I love that it's different than the traditional welcome or anything like that. So I know they went out of stock pretty quickly, but they are coming back, so anybody who wants them. I lay my stencil where I want it. Now, if I want, I can do this. I just wanna go here, okay? 
you can have it come over the pedal. You can have it come under the pedal. I'm going to have it come under the pedal. So now I'm using my stencil brush, dry. I'm picking up my antique maroon, scrubbing off. And we're going to go back and we're going to do the same thing we did before. And I'm going to stop at my pedal because I don't want it to go onto my... Um, I want it to go under my pedal. If I wanted it to go over my pedal, I would let it go. I would just keep going. And I'm probably off camera now. Let me move over. And I'm clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. Okay. Now, you can lift. You can take it off and say, oh, I don't like this. And I don't have that. You just take it, lay it right back where it was, and you can see. And just again, add some more if that's what you want. Okay? Now, again, wash your stencil the same way you would wash the other one. Something that I am not too keen on, and again, personal, I don't like these separations in your stencil. If you notice, I don't have them here because I took them out. I'm going to take my rigger. Now when you use a rigger, if you don't have a rigger, use a liner. When you have a rigger, you're going to take your rigger. Let me get some new antique moon. If your paint doesn't move well, just get some new. You only need a tiny, tiny bit for this. I'm going to put my rigger. I'm going to wiggle just a little bit. When I wiggle, look, I have a perfectly flat brush. Okay? If I'm here and then I lift, I have a round. So I can do a ton with this brush. This is one of my always go to brushes. I'm going to wiggle. I'm going to have a flat brush. And I'm still in the antique maroon. And I'm going to come in. And I'm just going to fill those gaps. My brush is flat. And I'm just going along the letter. And you see what I'm doing? I'm in the same color. I'm still in the antique maroon. If you did not get a stencil because it was out of stock, you can do this anytime. You can also do any word. This word I happen to look. Okay, so you see now how I just broke up, I fixed all those gaps. Now I have a full word. Okay. Now to make the letters dimensional, did I put black on the list? Hmm, I don't think I did. All right, well we can use a skeleton. I have a skeleton. When you want to make something dimensional, <laughs> you have to have kind of a shadowy like color i originally wanted to do it in bronze but it didn't show up in bronze the way i wanted it to so i'm going to take my color and i'm going to come right outside that's not going to work so for all of you who i didn't tell you need black It's a good thing my paint is in order. Nothing else is, but my paint is. Okay, so a darker color. Um, on a lot of cases, you can use a lighter color. On this case, I would. I was going to originally use white, but my background is white, so I can't use white because you won't see it. So I'm going to come in. Now I'm going to use my rigger. I'm not going to flatten it. And I'm going to use it up. So I'm coming right outside the... Oh, not like that. That was too much water in my brush. So you just take your Q-tip and just pull it off. Try not 
to be as messy as me. Usually I'm not so messy. Tonight I'm so messy. Okay. So I'll come in. Now, the left, no, outside the right side of the each letter. So, a funny thing is when people do right sides. And I'm going to show you. This is a right side. This is a right side. Now, when you get to your letters, people think, okay, well, here's your right side. And here's your right side. But if you look at your letter, here, this is a right side also, because this is the right side of that section. This is a right side, and this is a right side. So it makes a big difference if you're only doing here and here. This is all right sides. So break down each letter here, this connection, that's right. Be careful you don't have too much water in your brush because for some reason, I'm having a day of too much water. Now, if this was my intermediate class, and don't tell them, I would have them float outside instead of lying outside. So if you feel comfortable with floating, you can float outside each the right side of each letter. Now, it's not a rule that you do right sides. You can do left sides, but be consistent. Do all left, all right, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. Okay, so I'm here. And I'm here. And you see how I am now making this dimensional? It doesn't look flat. So it's flat here, but look at, so look at the E versus the O. That's just adding the shadow line on the outside of the letter. It is connected to the letter. Do not leave a line between it. So it is touching your actual letters, okay? Here, you see how pretty that looks? I happen to really love this piece. However, just in case none of you knew, I love flowers. And I paint flowers all the time. And I'm here. So see how now I've just popped my whole letter? Okay. So, after we did our background, after we did our petals, let me just go into, we did our center. We used our, we shaded and we highlighted. Then we took our deer foot, which if I had, okay, yeah. The hoof of a foot, the toe, the heel. We worked on the toe. We picked up our paint on the toe. We la lightly tapped our entire center in asphaltum. And then we tapped cadmium yellow. And then we picked up crimson tide and, type and tapped along the edge. Okay. Then I added a little bit of autumn red. Then I came in and I washed my petals with autumn red country red, um, just not a bright red. You could use Santa red too, but Santa red will give you a real bright red flower. Then I laid my stencil and I stenciled my words in antique maroon. And then I came in with a rigor and I, I bridged the gaps. And then I came in and I lined outside each letter in black, okay? Now, just a quick two-second thing, and then I'll show you what's next, because we did pretty good on our time tonight. When you transfer something, so you'll see 
here where I transferred. My graphite line is still there. You see that? So I'll just take a pencil, and because it's graphite, I'll just come in and erase it, and it's gone. Okay? So before you varnish, just make sure that you've erased. All right? And touch up if you want. You can touch up the background, anything that's white that needs to be touched up, you can do that. Okay? Now, on here, my nice little um, note here. The 23rd, the intermediate class. Can you see? Is the right side up? We'll see. Um, we're working in fluid acrylics, which is a lot of fun. They're transparent, so they're going to be a lot of fun. We're working with stamps. I'm going to teach you how to stamp with paint versus a stamp pad. So that'll be a lot of fun. So that's September 23rd. I will quickly do floating. I am not going to go over floating. My beginner class is when I do a lot of technique, just so you know. My next beginner class is October 7th. This is our beginner piece, which is a steak. This steak, and here, I'll do this so you can see it. I bought it at Walmart. There was a design on the front of it. Um, let me make sure it's in the camera. There, there you go. There was a design on the front of it, and I just painted right over it. So it's from Walmart. You're just going to paint over it, paint it yellow, and then paint it orange. And we always paint yellow beneath it because orange is transparent. Okay? And then we'll go from there. And then next class, I'll show you what's October in the intermediate class. Because a girl's got to have some surprises. All right. I'm going to take this off. Does anybody have any questions? Is everybody okay? I didn't seem to have a lot of questions tonight. All right, so I'm going to sign off. I want to say thank you. Thank you all for coming. I hope you all learned something. I will go back and answer any comments that are questions so that you have your answers. If you have any questions, if you didn't paint it with me tonight and you want to paint it after, I will, um, if you have questions, just leave them here. I usually get a notification or private message me and I'm very, very happy to help you. And thank you, Virginia. And if there's anything else, you just let me know and I'm going to sign myself off and I'm going to say good night. And I'm going to say happy Labor Day to you all. And that's where we end. Have a good night, guys. Aw, thank you. All right. Now you get me because i got to figure out how to finish this.